Hi everyone, my name is Kylie Stock, and if I've got this going right, I think I should be recording. Um, I did my educational designer report on Thomas Gallaudet, and so my PowerPoint kind of to go with my presentation. It's just a few little bullet points, and then I'm going to just expound on them on my own. So to begin for his biography, uh, Thomas was born in December of 1787 in Philadelphia, and there was a little controversy on what day he was born when I was doing my research. So a couple more sites that he was born on December 10th, but I had a few say December 7th, so I'm not sure which it was, but he was born in December. And when Thomas was a child, he encountered frequent nightmares and nervous attacks in his sleep. And a few of my different sites did say that they continued to cause him some issues as he went into college and tried to continue on with his schooling but he was too persistent and wouldn't let it hold him back. So he ended up attending Yale University and graduated at the age of 17, which I think is absolutely amazing. I could never imagine graduating college at the age of 17, but somehow he had the willpower to do it. And then after he graduated Yale University, he went to the Andover Theological uh, Seminary to be able to teach. But then his nervous attacks and nightmares continued to caused him problems, so he decided to return to Connecticut with his parents to live. And once he was back in Connecticut, um, I actually really liked one of the stories that I found, so I'm just, I've got the quote in there, and I'm just going to read it as how it goes. It said, according to Gallaudet University records, the story goes as this. The legend goes, in 1814, looking out the window, he noticed that his younger brothers and sisters were not playing with another child. When he went out to investigate, he learned that this young woman, Alice Cogswell, was deaf. Not knowing sign language, Thomas attempted to communicate with Alice by pointing to his hat and writing hat in the dirt. She understood him, and he was inspired to teach her more. Now, this alone I just think is a great example because it shows that even though it was difficult to teach her, he had the strong motivation and ambition to be able to teach someone who was in need of help. So, after this and him wanting and having the desire to teach her. Alice's father actually decided to send Thomas over to Europe to continue his schooling and to get an education in teaching those who are deaf and to learn the different methods of teaching. So while he was in Europe, he studied many, many, many different times or different forms of communication. And there were several places that showed he learned three or four different methods of teaching to the deaf. And I think it said the most common one was uh, just lip reading. They wanted anyone who was deaf to be able to read lips and just understand words that way, but Thomas didn't like that. He found that sign language was the easiest way to communicate, and it was just uh, easier to understand by simply pointing to different objects or showing what they were, and it just made it easier for them to learn. And so following his um, education over in Europe, uh, he did return to America. And once he returned to America in 1817, Thomas opened the first American Deaf School in Hartford, Connecticut. And initially he did start out pretty slow. He only had seven students and one of them was Alice, so six students besides her. And the school was called the American School for the Deaf. And then it was originally opened just as a private institution and he was the principal for the school from 1817 until April 6th, 1830, when he resigned to devote his time and ministry to the writing of children's books. And it also goes on to say after that that he eventually quit writing children's books and went on to doing many other things with his life. And then something that I actually thought was pretty interesting myself, and it was one of the kind of cooler things that I thought about his life, was uh, while he was teaching, he did end up falling in love with one of his own students, and her name was Sophia Fowler. And they later ended up getting married and had eight children together. So I just thought that was kind of cool that something that he simply noticed ended up leading him to his wife into getting married and creating his own family. But um, I just wanted to share with you guys a couple personal examples that I've had in seeing how his teachings affected me in my life. And the first one is, I don't know if any of you are on-campus students or we're mostly online, but I'm an on-campus student, and so every week I do get the opportunity to attend a devotional on Tuesdays at 2 o'clock, and one thing that I've been able to notice and pick up on is that they have somebody always in the bottom right-hand corner of the auditorium sitting with several students who de 
do need sign language translation because they are deaf. And without fail, every single Tuesday, there is someone there signing the speaker's talk to those who need it so that they can partake in the lesson. And that's just one thing that I thought was really cool. And then one more example is me being bad. I was a few minutes late to church a couple weeks ago, and as I walked in, I wasn't really sure what was going on just because I was late, but the teacher who was teaching, she was taking a little bit longer to teach just because she had to stop and she was signing the entire language, or sorry, signing the entire lesson to the class as she was teaching. And every time somebody would comment or give something that they wanted to devote to the lesson, she would translate that into sign language as well. And then towards the end of the lesson, I finally realized she had invited a friend to come to church with her, who was a member, but she just had a harder time learning because she was deaf. And so since she knew sign language, she invited her to come sit in her lesson because she knew sign language so she could sign the entire lesson to her. And I just thought that was really cool for how many different ways there are that sign language really can benefit our lives and for how much of an imp impact Thomas's teachings have had on us. And so that's just... Those are a few things about Thomas's life, and overall, I think he's been a great example to us, and I think we should all be able to learn from him, and I hope you guys learn to love him just as much as I have. Thank you.